specific latent heat. Just now latent heat, right? Okay, so what does it mean by specific latent heat? The specific latent heat of a substance is the amount of heat required to change the phase. Change the phase means change the state, okay? So up to this point, it's still the same as the latent heat, right? Okay, so that is the energy need to change the phase, uh, change the state of one kg of substance at a constant temperature. Okay, see the only difference is this one is for one kg. Latent heat, it doesn't matter. One kg, two kg, three kg, it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, but specific latent heat, it must be just one kg of the substance. For example, uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, we have a cube. Okay, we have a cube, and the mass is three kg. Three kg. Yeah. Let's say this is ice. Uh, this is ice. Uh, ice. Ice cube. Three kg. Uh, it needs. It needs a heat energy, let's say uh, 600,000 Joule, 600,000 Joule uh, to melt this 3 kg, okay, 3 kgs of ice. Uh. So the latent heat, the latent heat is 600 Joule. So that is the amount of heat, uh, an amount of uh, thermal energy need to change uh, the state from solids to liquid. Uh. So the latent heat is 600 Joule, okay? Then how about the specific, specific latent heat? Any idea? Yes, any idea? So what is the specific latent heat? 200 Joule, that's correct. Okay, 200, uh, sorry, 200,000 Joule, okay? 200,000 Joule. Uh, 600,000 Joule for three kg, 200,000 Joule for one kg. We take this divided by three, yeah? 600,000 divided by 3. Okay, this one we divided by 3. Uh, uh, then we get this. Okay, because a uh, 3 kg, 600,000. So uh, 1 kg, 200,000. Uh, so specific latent heat is for 1 kg of the substance. Okay, 1 kg of the substance. Uh, and it's measured in Joule per kg because it's for 1 kg. Uh, so it's uh, amount of uh, heat Joule per kg. Uh, uh, so energy is measured in Joule and the mass is in kg. So specific latent heat is 200 Joule per kg. Latent heat, just Joule, uh, okay? We don't have per kg, but specific latent heat, uh, we have Joule per kg. So that is a uh, specific latent heat. Example, specific latent heat of ice is 334,000 Joule per kg. It means we need 334,000 Joule of energy to convert uh, 1 kg of water to ice or to convert 1 kg of ice to water. So that is the energy needs to change the state of matter. Solids to liquids or liquids to solids or uh, liquids to gas, gas to liquid. Eh? Okay, so that is a specific latent heat. From the definitions, uh, we need to know, uh, we know that the specific latent heat eh, okay, is denoted by the symbol L. We, we have two symbols eh, for space specific latent heat, eh? a capital letter L and a small letter L, okay? Uh, the capital letter L is for a specific latent heat of fusions, eh? specific latent heat of fusions. And the small letter L is for a specific latent heat of vaporizations. But for me, um, I will only use one. Q equals ML, okay? I don't care about it's capital letter L or small letter L because for the calculations, they are the same. But in your book, uh, you may have a uh, capital letter L and small letter L, okay? Capital letter L is for uh, fusions and small letter L is for vaporizations. Uh, in the exam, it doesn't matter, okay? You use capital letter L or small letter L, it doesn't matter. Just don't want to confuse you. So I will use the same symbol eh, for uh, specific latent heat of fusions and a specific latent heat of vaporizations. I'm going to use the same symbol. Eh? Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, from the definitions, we know that the specific latent heat of uh, fusions or vaporization is the amount of heat eh, per 1 kg of mass. So it, it can be calculated by using uh, thermal energy change divided by mass, right? Some book, uh, some book, they even use uh, E, 
E equals to ML, eh? E equals to ML. Uh, so they say this is energy, energy, okay. But uh, for me, since we already use Q equals to MC theta, okay, when we discuss a uh, specific heat capacity, right, we use Q well, for thermal energy. So I think so we better use the same symbol to denote uh, thermal energy change. Okay, we use the same symbol to denote thermal energy change. Yeah? So, so I, I, I do not use E. Okay, some book. Uh, for uh, specific heat capacity, they use Q, and then for term, there's a specific latent heat, they use E. Yeah? Okay, sometimes may cause some confusions. So to avoid these confusions, I I use the same symbol eh, for uh, specific heat capacity and uh, specific latent heat. Eh? So again, let's come back to this formula. So uh, so latent heat, specific latent heat eh, is uh, how much thermal energy needed to convert uh, 1 kg of the substance. Eh? So it can be calculated by using Q equals ML. And therefore, the, the amount of thermal energy needed to change the state of metals, uh, Q equals to ML. Okay. Uh, so for example, just now we learned that the specific latent heat of water, H2O, okay, is uh, 334 thousands joule per kg right okay so if we have a cube of 3 kg if the mass is 3 kg yeah, so then the amount of uh, energy needed is 3 multiplied by 334 thousand joule that's how easy it is okay so that is uh how we calculate the amount of energy needed to uh change or convert huh? the an object from one state to another state okay and take note that uh, this q actually is the latent heat uh. this q actually is the latent heat l is the specific latent heat uh. q is the latent heat okay that is the energy needed to change uh, a state of object an object from uh, one state to another state uh. okay so that is the formula that we are going to use for the uh, change of state so and then uh, we have specific heat of vaporization that is for uh, change from liquids to gas or gas uh, to liquid. Eh? So is the heat needed to change one kg of liquid at its boiling points into vapor without a change in temperature or uh, vice versa? Okay, or the the energy will be absorbed eh, during vaporization and released during condensation. We we use the same name okay for uh, 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 vaporizations. And also condensation. Even though for condensations, uh, we still call it latent heat of vaporization. Eh? The specific latent heat of fusion. Uh, this is for uh, melting and freezing. Eh? Okay, the, that's the heat needed to change one kg of solid at its uh, melting point to liquids or vice versa without change of temperature. So from solids to liquids, so it will uh, absorb heat. Okay, and uh, from liquids to solid, it will release the heat. Okay, yeah, it will lose the heat. Uh, solids to liquid, it will gain the heat. Okay, uh, you also need to know uh, when will it release the heat and when will it absorb the heat. Uh, you must know that as well. Okay. Okay. Now let's see the calculations questions. Uh. Calculations questions involving latent heat uh, is more complicated compared to the questions related to uh, specific heat capacity. Sometimes uh, it may cause some confusions to some students. Because uh, they don't know which formula that they should use. Uh, usually, um, the calculations will involve both the latent heat, eh? latent heat, and uh, heat capacity both. So sometimes students they don't know when to use uh, latent heat and when to use uh, specific heat capacity, and sometimes it even involve more than one specific heat capacity. Okay, sometimes it may be quite confusing. Eh? Okay. So I suggest that you follow the methods that I I'm going to use here, okay, to reduce some confusions, eh? okay, and reduce the chance that you make careless mistake. Okay, I'll show you the, the methods. Eh? Okay, now let's see the question first. Eh? Starting at twenty degree Celsius, how much heat is required to heat zero point three kgs of aluminium to its melting point and then to convert it all to liquids so what we do is every times okay when you ask to solve uh, questions involving the change of state eh, change of states we draw a, a vertical straight line first okay uh, let's draw the vertical straight line here 
okay we do this when it involves conversions of state like melting okay uh, from liquids to solid uh, when there's a conversions of state uh, okay that's how we solve it then so we we mark okay we mark the initial temperature okay we mark the initial temperature so the initial temperature is uh, 20 degree celsius okay 20 degrees celsius and then uh, the question says that uh, we heat these aluminiums to its melting point the melting point is 660 degree celsius okay 660 degree celsius okay so when you heat this object uh, from 20 to 660 degrees celsius when it start melting when it start melting the temperature will remain the same okay up to here is still 660 uh, okay remain the same but before this before this it is solid solid okay and uh this is when it's melting okay and then after that it become liquid okay so i want you okay to use this to help you to figure out what's happening actually huh? what's happening so initially the temperature is 20 degrees celsius you heat it the temperature go up to 660 degrees celsius and then it start melting when it start melting the temperature remain the same the temperature remain the same then so after melting is still 660 eh? degrees celsius okay 660 degrees celsius and after melting it become liquid the questions we would like us to find the heat needed from this point to this point okay they want us to find the heat energy needed from 20 to 660 but 660 is after melting eh? uh they want us to find how much energy requires eh? melting and convert all the aluminiums to liquids so that's the first things that you need to know okay okay we need to identify the thermal energy involved right thermal energy involved eh? so remember if there is a change of temperature the thermal energy can be calculated by using q equal to m c theta when there's a change of temperature like 20 to 660 eh? 20 to 660 so the energy can be calculated by q equal to m c theta okay and when there's no change of temperature but it's a change of state from solids to liquids okay change of state melting boiling freezing condensations eh? evaporation something e even evaporations eh? when there's a change of state without changing the temperature uh, then we find the thermal energy by using the formula q equal to ml q equal to ml this is the latent heat eh? this is the latent heat so that's that's how we solve the problems that's how we solve the problems uh the m okay the mass is 0 0.3 kg so the m equal to 0 0.3 kg and the specific heat capacities specific heat capacities of aluminium is uh 900 joule per kg per degree celsius eh? so c equal to 900 joule per kg per degree celsius specific latent heat of aluminium l l equal to three to one thousand joule per kg theta the change of the temperature is six six zero minus 20 which is equal to six four zero degree celsius right change of temperature is from 20 to 660 okay now in this case the mass is the same eh? okay 0 0.3 kg change of temperature 0 0.3 kg and uh, all 0 0.3 kg is melted okay so the m is the same okay so now we have our m l c theta then we can find the heat change eh? okay so the heat change is equal to m c theta okay this one is to change the temperature and then plus m l okay this one is to convert the state from solids to liquids okay so the mass is uh 0 0.3 kg the c is 900 the change of temperature 640 plus 
uh, now this is a little the this is the terms of the latent heat okay the latent heat uh, the mass is still 0 0.3 kg because same mass latent heat okay so be very sure okay because sometimes students they're just confused okay specific specific heat capacity latent heat okay which ones to use huh? uh so for change of state we use latent heat huh? so uh three to one thousands three hundred and twenty one thousands okay mm. then okay use the calculator to find the answer so uh two hundred and sixty nine thousands one hundred joe